And here we have gathered on the six, gentlemen, for another exciting episode of the Champions of Nurn campaign, starring our heroes, the Crimson Bones. In our last episode, our 35th session of D&D, our party was resting and gathering themselves at the Great Tree of Wilkir Bitterroot, fixing and gathering supplies, eager to start the next leg of your journey. Who was good Bonebreaker suggested the party set off on a great hunt. After all, many a dank beast dwell within the Fog Forest, and many an odd mystery. After a uh, brief dog interaction, it was only a few hours after treading into the Fog Forest when the Crimson Bones found their quarry. Springing into action and flanking around the beast, what stands before you all now is truly an oddity. A miserable mixture of a buffalo, dinosaur, warthog, and like a hippopotamus. It has the body of a buffalo and sits upon these squat legs that resemble that of a pachyderm. Its face resembles that of a warthog and sat atop its elongated neck, which seems rather ill-suited to actually support its form. We find you now, the Crimson Bones, deep within the fog forest at the foot of your quarry. <laughs> but Amir, I think it is 50 feet or so away from you. The orange catablepus is prepared to face the Crimson Bones. What the bleep is? You gentlemen may select your tokens and roll for initiative. As you are doing so, I will reenact what occurred just prior. You all had your own light of sight, aside from Skeezel Binbag. Skeezel Binbag, you're, you're really racing into the fray for the first time and, and truly witnessing uh, this large orange monst tusk monstrosity. Uh, Uzga Bonebreaker, as you decided the time was right, and sprang forth out from your hiding location, dashing a mighty 80 feet or so away from the edge of the forest line into this clearing. Uh, you snapped on a branch, and this creature turned to face you, uh, kind of making you halt in your tracks. Its large, red bloodshot eyes uh, were quite the sight. That is when Mandy and Gelden raced off to your flank just within the field, aside from Syfax and fired a palm pistol shot upon the beast. Mandy and Geld and I will allow you to take your palm pistol shot oh, before our combat begins, as you expressly stated you wanted to do so. And it is the six. <laughs> it fires off, uh, ricocheting on, on part of like the scaled hide of the beast that's layered underneath its, its like musky orange coat. Uh, unfortunately, no effect. <laughs> the percussive pop of Mandy and Gelden's 32 caliber palm pistol unfortunately has no effect and that is what will spring off our combat here ooh lord let's see let's get some initiative for this big old beast I like music <laughs> It should be said, oh, it was good yeah. bone breaker. From where you are right now, you can already begin yeah. to smell this creature. Ooh. Boy, oh, smell it is that, boys. Nasty. Oh, yeah. that smell is you, was good. He's gonna scream into the night. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, dude. Where's Syfax at? We need our boy Syfax. He's under the important NPC and party NPC section, rightfully so. Uh, the young man right in the fray with the rest of you. 
I wish him well. Cool. Ooh, shit. Oh, no way. Matching the creature's <laughs> initiative. He'll act. The Cyfax will be going first. Good Can't job, believe Cyfax. Technically, like a little bit more dexterous than this than this large, uh, nasty creature. Cyfax pushes in. Uh, let's see here. He's he has orders to follow. He'll be getting alongside you, Who's Good Bonebreaker, rushing over his bagpipes in hand, and he will bust down a bardic inspiration upon you. <laughs> Who's good? Beat this beast! Turn him into me! He plays, plays a nasty little, nasty little bagpipe tune. Um, you have a bardic inspiration die to do with as you will, Who's Good Bonebreaker. I hope oh, it makes yeah. a difference. And let's see. That being his bonus action, there's something else he can do. Um, ooh, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Ooh, shit. Tripping me out. Ooh, he's going to attempt to cast vicious mockery upon the beast if he's able to do so. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Creature you can see and that can hear you within range. Yeah, doesn't have to, doesn't have to understand you. So, so that Cyfax, <clears throat> Cyfax is fucking, hey, you big stupid thing! Just, 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 just trying to, just trying to gain the attention of, um, this creature. It will attempt to succeed on this wisdom save. It's unable to. Succumbs to this effect. Ooh, okay. Okay. Nice, giving a disadvantage on its next attack. A strong move from Cyfax. And it takes the one psychic damage. Uh, seems hardly affected. With that, this large beast, seeing it was struck from the side uh, by Mandy and Gelden, it will attempt to rear up. Um, <laughs> you watch Mandy Gelden as a... Uh, the percussive blast from this beast kind of, you know, it definitely, it definitely took notice of it and perhaps wasn't quite sure of what it really was, but glances over and hones its red eyes in your direction. Uh, no. It moves over yonder, and in a bit of an odd manner you weren't expecting, 15 feet getting kind of beyond a stump, and puts its hind legs up upon the stump. And that's when you see its, like, cudgel-like tail uh, form over like a scorpion and point in your direction. No. You see a small twinkle, Mandy and Gelden, uh, of energy coming from the cudgel of this tail that begins to uh, just be, like, elevate in brightness in size, almost sucking in the light around it. And it makes a high pitched noise. Ooh, it's a good bone <laughs> breaker that you can make out quite clearly. Um, and, and eventually, Mandy and Gelden, it reaches its climax, and a fucking beam of energy, like, erupts from the tail of this creature, <laughs> digging into, the, like, the ground in front of you, and, like, tearing up the dirt, like, t cutting toward your direction, like, <clears throat> it is a fucking, like, devastating fucking, like, beam of energy, um, <laughs> coming your way, Mandy and Gelden. I need you to make a constitution saving throw as this energy beam makes its way, like, right fucking for you. <laughs> Alright, constitution saving throw. Holy shit. Oh. Ooh! Okay, okay, thank god. You, uh, you only take 21 necrotic damage as this energy beam comes trailing right through you. Like, you fight, you fight, even though you, you sidestep at the last second, and the creature just adjusts and finds its way, like, tearing up, like, the side of your thigh and almost up your corpse and, you, well, you know, your body, not corpse yet. Gee, I'm sorry. Excuse me. That was rude. That was rude. <laughs> and then you find yourself doing, like, a limbo backward, uh, probably saving your life. Shit, that was 22 damage, you said? Uh, 21 necrotic damage oh, okay. total. 21 Of, of course, with bad. whatever, uh, of course, with whatever yeah, with... reducements and, and so on you have. And <laughs> uh, skis will bin bag. Like, everyone, every, you all see this. It's, uh, it's impossible not to see. It's a terrifying, you know, like, Dragon Ball Z beam that, uh, 
passes beyond Manny and Yeldon and continues, um, like, tear tearing down some of the dead trees over yonder before it eventually finishes, and the creature roars out in anger. Mandy and Gelden, what do you got? Um, <laughs> he's got boiling skin under his suit, and he's gonna cast mirror image. Actually, yeah, maybe mirror image. Hold on a sec. <laughs> I'll give you a little time. <laughs> but boy, are you feeling it. Yeah, I'm gonna cast Mirror Image. <laughs> I'm gonna just post that to mm. the thing. Please do. Uh, whatever you could possibly use to help negate any more <laughs> damage from this creature uh, would be excellent. And you can you cast Mirror Image. On yourself. That is the plan. Uh, I believe I will be out of actions. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, the uh, you know your mechanism, you know, still still activating. How long? Just oh, a minute. Okay. Giving you giving you a counter there. That zero means yes. ten. So you know. Yep. Anything else, Manny? Go. That's it. That's it for actions. Do you want to move um, or anything like that? I'm thinking about moving. I think I may actually move up to here. Yeah. And call it a turn. Act with okay. disadvantage, or did it not matter? It didn't matter in this case, unfortunately. It was okay. it wasn't it wasn't an accuracy based attack, unfortunately, okay. from Mandy and Gelden. <laughs> 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 uh, you you watch Will Scoop Bonebreaker as Mandy and Gelden shrugs off one of the more devastating attacks you've seen. Um uh, yes. <laughs> and 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 is seemingly pushing pushing deeper into the fray. Oh, You're up, seeing baby. that devastating attack launched toward my dear friend. I will enter a rage. Consider it done. Uzgo Bonebreaker striking his familiar pose, hones in. Oh, let's see. Oh, that shit. Um, I'm going to take a step forward. Please do. And unleash an infused harpoon. So badass. This filthy beast. Unleash it. Oh, that's back. That hits. <laughs> that hits absolutely. A whopping, what is that, 16 damage? Beautiful. Yep. 16 damage dealt to the beast, a meaty strike that finds itself in the side of the neck. Uh, the creature takes its attention off of Mandy Gelden, facing towards you, Uzgut Bonebreaker. What else? In a rage, I scream at the animal, over here, and throw another harpoon. Badass, badass. <sighs> another one goes. Syphax, very impressed as the another harpoon finds its mark for a nice 11 damage. Beautiful. Fantastic. Two, two positive strikes. Definitely making an impact on this creature already. Um, it's pretty pissed. And as you're wrapping that up, it was bone breaker. As, you, as you've tossed your second one and it lands its mark, you find your infused harpoon returning back into your hand. Anything else? Get behind me, Syphax. And I end my turn. Okay. Skiswell Binbag. You are up, my friend. You find yourself on the very northern edge of the battlefield. Uh, perhaps maybe where you want to be. You think maybe unseen. <laughs> All right. Um, it's not really a matter of what I'm going to do. It's just like where it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I definitely don't want to hit my friends, so I'm gonna have to aim a little hmm. bit behind the creature. Like we saw, like we saw. Alright. Like we saw, what do you got? What, what are we talking here? <laughs> not big, <laughs> not big surprise. Do you feel? Okay. That mm -hmm. might do it. Sick. Right around there, yeah. Let's see, the creature okay. fails its dexterity save, taking the entirety of the 31 points of fire damage. Uh, you guys all watch as this tiny orange bead, ever so familiar now, flicks off, elevating and, and 
met crowing in magnitude into this roaring fireball that implodes right at the feet of the creature um engulfing the entire area in a brief bit of explosion uh that quickly turns into dissipating black smoke and the creature is looking pretty fucked up already well done master bin bag anything furthermore um yeah i'm gonna move uh like there so be it so be it certainly within your certainly within your bounds to do so um syfax <laughs> right behind you was good and yeah he, uh, he, he will like kind of use you for cover And we'll do we'll do something. Let's see what can he do? Ooh, I can pepper. Ooh, he's got a little daggy. He's got a little daggy action. How close can he be? Ooh, all right, all right. We'll try to take a little dagger toss at this beast. Yeah. But it just hit land shy in the dirt. Shit. <laughs> the large orange beast. It will move up over towards you, Manny, and going kind of stumbling and, and, and shaking itself from, from out of this 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 big arcane explosion that was engulfing <laughs> it thanks to Skeezwell Binbag's arcane prowess. Um, and it will attempt to take a strike at you with its large tail club. No. Um, you best watch out. And what happens to strike? It ain't nothing. You, uh, you avert that 41 bludgeoning damage as it <laughs> comes, like, wailing, you know, comes, comes cleaving straight for you. Um, this, this creature's tail is obviously the most dangerous part about it. it it's, it's quite clear to you now. Um... Manny and Gelt, fucking that creature, fucking you just narrowly just stuck under its strike. And as you're reorientating yourself and getting ready for your turn, you are caught by the stench of this creature. Oh. It is like being, you know, blasted with a skunk at point blank range. I need you to make a constitution saving throw, my friend. Just Shit. being near the miasma of this beast is enough to completely knock you off your game. No. <sighs> Unfortunately, my friend, Manny and Gelden, you are, as of now, for the rest of this turn, poisoned. Shit. Um, I will, I will inform you on what that, on what that means, uh, when you know. But it isn't good. <laughs> Manny's getting the brunt. I'm taking it, I'm taking it, guys. It's Attack him quick! Um, a poison quick, creature quick. has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Damn. Okay. But other than that, you uh, your your turn. Please make 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 commences normal. Ability checks meaning like uh, you know, skill, skill checks check and... or a saving throw. I don't think saving throws. I th I think for okay. saving throws they are unaffected, but attacks and uh, like skill checks. Um, got it. Will be okay. Will be at disadvantage for this turn. Okay. You Whoa. were just, you were just like, you know, you, it's, it's hard to even concentrate on what to do with the retching that, 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 that you're on, that you're undergoing. All right, well, Mandy and Geldens will have to cast Blur as well. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Okay, so be it. I'm giving him disadvantages against me. So be it. As a counter, and I will also cast my defensive field as a bonus action. <laughs> To restore my six temporary hit points. Very good, my friend. Busting out all the stops. You find your mechanisms are still working. Um, but boy, you are, you are, you are, you know, your, your entire leg is just burning. Shit. Um, I will try to rotate around this creature. Easily done. To change his attention. Ooh, okay. Away from my friends. All right, okay. Hopefully. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah, very good. Very good. So be it. So well, be it. Uh, that'll be my turn. Yeah. It was good bone breaker. Uh, Manny and Gelden is alive. <laughs> what, what, what are you up to? 
Oh, you know, just throwing another infused harpoon at this thing. Nice. <laughs> I reckon you oughta. You you watch this like the creature went up to Manny Gell and the Manny Gell just like oh, he's, like, he's like, yeah, keeled over for a second. <laughs> Uh, before eventually just kind of like making his way around the beast so perhaps perhaps being at range won't be so bad um ooh, you just strike the beast just barely so for a nice 16 damage striking it in one of its front legs well done what's next fearing for mandian's life i will step forward 30 feet ooh. and get close to this animal Damn. Damn. I will God. take out my silver longsword and take Ooh. a two-handed slash at this thing. So be it. So be it. All of a sudden, finding yourself with a free hand, you close the distance, drawing your sword and going for a two-handed chop. You slaughter the beast. How is it nice. killed? Looks good, bone breaker. Looks good. Stabs it deeply below its neck into its chest and the beast just falls its long neck writhing falling to the ground its tail falls limpless and a large cloud of dust poof, rises up from the creature as it lay slain and our combat crimson bones has concluded uh Syfax immediately <laughs> Oh shit, I was good. That was sick. Oh, oh. And he like runs over to you, Manny and Gelden, and he like immediately, you know, cast um ca cast cure wounds on you. Manny and Gelden collapses to the ground, clutching his leg, just pretty much boiling in his suit. Oh yeah, yep, that's what I thought. That doesn't look good. <laughs> oh god. Uh you you notice Manny and Gelden, there is a uh, if, <laughs> yeah, well, you get you regain six HP thanks to the uh minor yet soothing healing of Syfax. Um, and for the first time, you can see blood coming from a, you know, a solid portion of your armor where, uh, you know, where, you're, where, where you ought not to be leaking through. Um, your suit is officially compromised. You have lost, unfortunately, I hate to tell you, some of your very valuable armor condition. No! <laughs> It's, it's high time. That's 21 necrotic damage was just enough to push you. Oh, God, it hurts. That was a big hit. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that hurt. <laughs> that didn't feel great. Uh, somehow you find yourself to have not taken the worst of it somehow and then and you think you got out relatively lucky from from the encounter with this creature um oh God. thankfully your companions are are no 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 have, have a no mess around kind of attitude um and got straight to business and i will be making adjustments to your armor now currently as it stands master gelden to reflect its current condition roger i um, reduced the armor condition on my sheet already you're a good man the, just that one value i believe all this will really do is lower the ac of your adamantine armor from 17 to a 16. no until it can be at least repaired <clears throat> he's my glorious 17. Ow. i can't believe it <laughs> there is just a there is just a very stabable uh very stabbable open portion near the groin of your suit that must be mended. Shit. But uh all of your all of your systems seem functional and you and it was good find yourselves kind of a bit repulsed from from the scent of this beast uh that way before you. Oh god, who's gold, huh? I don't know if you want any bones from this creature, but I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna be sick. Without even responding, Lizgood pulls a dagger and walks towards the beast. <laughs> Good. I'll have you... Lizgood is looking, looking for that tail. Ooh. Oh. So be it, Lizgood Bonebreaker. I'll have you make a constitution saving throw. Because even though the creature is dead, it is still very, very, very stinky. 
And it, in fact, it will only smell worse as time goes on. You, 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 you will find yourself, you know, having a hard time skinning this animal, but it is, it is possible. It is possible. You're experienced enough. You think you might be able to tough it out, but you know, it will be more difficult than usual. Okay. That, yeah, that's about it. Uh, you can make a survival check to go about hacking whatever bits and pieces you want off of this beast. Um, other party members, what are we up to? Any to anything in particular? Um, I mean, yeah. I'd like to cast Cure Wounds on my leg. <laughs> mm, yeah, very, hey, very good. So be it. So be it. Easily done. Easily done for you. Um, you still find yourself, you know, over your stinging in raw down there. Um, and you think you stemmed the majority of your bleeding, but oof. That was a uh, necrotic damage. It's no joke. And you give yourself a nice 12 HP. Oh, much, much better. I just gotta get this suit repaired. I'll, I'll check out the damage, see see how long I think it's going to take for me to fix it and what I'm going to require materials and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Just kind of do a little check about. It, it may, System you know, check. So, very good. Very good. Make, a, um, make an investigation check for me. Investigation. Getting away from the beast, you are, uh, you are no longer poisoned. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. And you are able to get a, get a, get a good feel for, um, for what damage you, you sustained. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's just a clear hole in the, in, 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 in what is the, th you know, weaker inner thigh plating, um, material that will just, you know, need, need some type of, lighter metal mending of some kind it should you know probably won't be too too terrible um getting it comfortable may may be another matter it will probably only take a probably only a day or two you know at, at worst and you think maybe if you harvest some more of those um peculiar like metallic urchins that that you saw over at the base of the great tree um that may mm. that may be sufficient enough material to get to get the patchwork job done okay all right i'll have to see what i can do back at camp cool in addition of course to um to master bin bags crafting project that you that we have undergoing as yes. well um yes there's can a, I get like a can I have like a blueprint item or something so that I don't forget? Oh, oh, um, sure, sure, of course, absolutely, Master Bin Bag. Let's see, I'll be at, I'll add it to your inventory post haste. A lot of schematic. Uh, let's see, Ooh, Master Bone Breaker, a seven survival. Unfortunately, the stench of this beast is so foul, so horrific. You are gonna, you're gonna have to pick, you, you know, you're, you're gonna have to pick between whether you, re, you know, you want that sweet bulbous tail or like the tusks of the beast. You'll be, unfortunately, you won't be able to have both. I All right, hold on. Skeezel, Skeezel wants to help. Skeezel sees Uzgood's plight in the stent <laughs> cloud. So be it. So be it. I'll allow it. I'll allow it, Master Bin Bag. Skeezel's going to grab a rusty dagger with his mage hand and oh. from a safe distance, uh, he is going to attempt Ooh. to remove the tail um, and the tusks mm -hmm. remotely. Mm -hmm. Very good, Master Bag. A, com a complicated maneuver. I will Indeed. ask a... I will ask a survival check for general skinning ability of the beast. In addition, I will ask for a sleight of hand check from you. Because, you know, due to, due to the ability of, I you know, me. Na navigating through the mage hand. Um... Something you're Ooh, probably we'll experiencing. Get out, of that lab. get out of that stink. Hold on. Skeezel's going to survive. Oh, 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 yeah. You know, I, I, I would say it's just enough to get the, get the job done, Master Boombag. A, a creative yeah, use of the mage hand. Slick enough. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. just, just so, just barely so. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I like the idea. I like the idea more than anything. Um, all right, all right, here, I'll sell it to you. No, I'll sell it. So, um, <laughs> he says, Uzbuk, come here. Grab my hand and control it. Ooh. And, uh, Uzgood, um, Skizwell beckons you to 
control his hands. I will grab like the, the hand. hand. I will Got grab it. the mage hand. And Got only it. through this cooperation is Skeezwell able to work. Um, <laughs> successfully remove the desired items. Okay. Very good. Very good. So be it. So be it. I would say you get the two primary tusks of the what you now Oh, you know what? It was good bone breaker. You are the only mm -hmm. you're you're the only one close enough to this creature to even really get a good look at it now. Give me a nature check. While you're sitting here hunched over the beast, you know, you Mm, indeed, indeed, it, it is. It is unfamiliar to you. It is unknown. Um, you have not seen a beast like this before. But with that being said, you have harvested its rather heavy, um, <laughs> rather heavy. I would say, um, like ten pound tail. Um, from from this creature. Oh yeah, it, you know it's it's you know it's a it's a it's a it's a proper like I don't even know. So it's you know almost like a rock, <laughs> real you know really, uh, to some extent. And you are you are able to have your choice of the of the two large tusks as well. So the two large tusks of the beast and the, I mean if you want the entirety of the of the bulbous cudgel tail. Yes, I I will take all of that. So be it. So be it. Let it be. Let it, let it be known. Let it be known. It is yours. It is yours, my friend. How um how grand are these tusks? I'm just wondering for like a weight value. Ooh, you could probably make them at two pounds each. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. And with that, my sweet crimson bones, your your great hunt has seemingly concluded. A bit of a close call. Um mm -hmm. but the beast slain. Um Lizgood would look to the sky and wants to kind of see what time of day it is. Mm. Let's see, Master Bonebreaker. Give me another survival check, why don't you? Okay. Usually peering up, you know, usually you can just peer up and look quite easily, but, you know, being in the fog forest, nothing is as simple as that. True. You find some slight overcast greeting you, but you recollect it to be the morning and this hunt to be rather brisk. Okay, okay. So you're pretty sure it's still before noon. Um, how far away are we from where I first saw the tracks where like all three of the tracks were at? Oh, a good dis a good few hours journey back toward the great tree. You've okay, been, fo you've okay. been following these tracks for a good while. Well, instead of that, I would like to just look around for some other signs of life tracks mm. anything markings mm. Mm. oh very good master bonebreaker give me another survival check mm. you're able to find the occasional markings and you know remnants of small game struthiomimus here struthiomimus there uh, but you don't make out anything that is of, you know, value or, you know, what is it? Nothing really noteworthy. Yeah, and, and also nothing very recent either. It seems like the, it seems like oh, the other okay. creatures, you know, have have, uh, have strayed away from this beast as well. Um, okay. <laughs> not not a party pleaser. This uh, this creature, it seems to you. Okay. What shall we do, sweet crimson bones? Well, this good looks to Mandian and 
Ask, what's your condition, buddy? Ah, uh, well, I haven't seen my suit like this before, and I'll try to show him my groin. <laughs> <laughs> show, him the, show him the gaping hole to my to my repaired leg with blood that's <laughs> surrounding the hole, and say, "Well, I should probably get back sooner than later, but I should be able to put up a good fight still." Well, uh, this thing's pretty heavy, but if you want, I, I claim this tail for you. Oh, I hand the tail towards Mandian. Very weapon nice used to destroy me. Might, might as well take it home with me. We can see what we can do with it. Maybe we can even figure out what powers it. Nice. So how much of that weigh? <laughs> I'll pounds. take it. 10 pounds. 10 pounds of like creature tail. <laughs> Just call it creature tail. Yeah, I mean, you know, you. I don't imagine you'll get another 10 pound creature tail anytime soon. Probably uh, not. Maybe no. though. <laughs> uh, Probably who's, not. Who's going back? Oh, thank, thank you for the gift. Um, surely won't bring me good memories, but. <laughs> oh, you can smile knowing that it's dead. Haha, <laughs> good point. Well, do you think we should carry on deeper, or are you getting hungry? Always a little hungry, but I always want to kill stuff more. Oh, oh. good. Let's go hunting. All right. How far away do we travel from uh, the tree? I mean, you know, like time-wise, time-wise. I mean, like a good few hours away. You're, you know, you're mm. already uh, what is what like probably not more than a half a dozen, pro pro probably only probably only like uh probably only like two or three hours away. Okay, I'll say. We need to the corpse. Ah, uh, that might be might be a good idea. That God smell. Dang. Who knows what creatures can smell that corpse? You think it stinks bad now? Imagine when it starts to rot. Oh man, God, you got you guys are making me sick. Do we really have to hang out this thing around with this thing more? We need to burn it. We need to put and make a giant pyre. Can't we go if home we and have some sweet rolls? Increase in intensity for weeks. I say you guys just shoot a firebolt at it. <laughs> we keep going. Yeah. I think it was school's ideas. Much cleaner. Come on, skis well. Ready your firebolt. I will also prepare mine. Very good. You gentlemen unleash the your respective firebolts toward the toward the corpse. Um they find it a bit resilient to, you know, being caught so liberally. It takes a few more attempts from from the both of you before eventually um the creature is just yeah, fi finally caught upon in flames from you striking the same area over and over. And the corpse of the creature begins to burn. Yes. As the crimson bones turn their back on it and walk Glad away. Didn't take any meat from that. <laughs> oh, I need it. <laughs> and a terrible stench fills the air as you gentlemen make your way deeper into the fog forest is that what i'm to understand well to me it looks like we have two options we can keep going deeper into the forest and camp out at the end of the day and then make our way back tomorrow and make it a two-day trip or we can circle or back around a different path and make it back to the tree by nightfall or maybe finding some other creatures on the way depends how long we want to be out here though well i'm a little more versed here in in the night so but i will say the night time we're more likely to run into stuff mm. that's true but um it's also not a great idea to be out at night in here 
Oh, is that a vote to circle back around the camp? My personal votes staying out, but mm. I'm down to do whatever you guys need to do. I'm tired of roughing it out in the woods. I need that nice warm moss bed. Yeah, and he looks down at his leg and says, well, uh, I, I don't mind staying out here, but I don't know. I haven't taken this much damage before. I kind of want to go back to. Just stay close to me, Mandian. I'll help a little with that. Oh, okay, you know how you know how to fix this? Uh, doing it out here I'll would be fixing really helpful. It, as far as the damage aspect, <laughs> oh, I will well. help you. Okay, thanks. I'll just have to... I'll just have to be more aware. Okay. All right, Crimson Bones. So, we're southbound once again. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's up to who's cool because he can take us anywhere and we won't have a clue. <laughs> I guess my intentions would be, uh, I think we're at a good enough distance away from the tree. Mm. I'd like to kind of just like start circling it. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Okay. Very good. Very good. Which direction would you like to circle it? We were originally southbound, correct? It's true. Um, I can't remember which way Claygon said, but I think it was west, southwest. So we'll start beginning the swing westward. Mm, okay. Okay. So very good. Very good. So be it. So be it. You push a little bit westwards, gentlemen. <clears throat> I assume we'll be mounting the usual travel rolls. Um, as such... I call Scout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as, as, as such, Blue's Good Bone Breaker, I'll have you make another survival check to lead the party on their way through the Fog Forest. Leave and life. Manny and Gelden, I'll get a perception check out of you as you keep your eyes open for danger. Uh, Uzka Bonebreaker, you lead the party, you know, a good half hour or so away from the from the smoldering beast in which you left. Encountering little resistance, um, you do spot a Struthiomimus, if you desire to prey upon the Struthiomimus. Infused Harpoon, go! <laughs> strike the, strike the Struthiomimus. Ooh, the Struthiomimus just ever so narrowly <laughs> makes its way uh, beneath beneath a small briar area away from your infused harpoon and out of range. Alas. Little bastard. They are mm. they are slippery. That there being said. more around here. <laughs> there may very well be. Um, pushing on over forward and your infused harpoon returning in your hand. Uh, Mandy and Gelden as you watch the Struthiomimus race off into the distance, you notice it, like, <laughs> kind of jumps over um, some of these small, like, black, like, black-stained rocks in, 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 in a clearing, it looks like to you. Um, mm. That seem a bit out of place. Um, and the Struthiomimus, you know, d disappears over, over beyond behind them. Interesting. I will definitely point them out to the crew and say, wait, hold up, I want to check this out. I'll go approach. Oh, very good. Uh, who's the bone breaker? Are you, are you in tow with Manny and Gelden? Is everyone, is everyone in lockstep together? What are we doing here? I will back Manny and Gelden up, curious as to what's going on. Syfax will get in on that too. He's well and reluctantly follows wherever he's led. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. The party heads over towards these, um... It's almost like these, like, these black, like, jagged stones. Um... And as you're getting near them, it appears that they were maybe in some type of configuration. Um... Before they were just, you know, hard, hard to say. Maybe time has weather, you know, what weather whatever structure this was away. Um... And it is now uh, some 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 type of rubble. Uh, 
Interesting. You said so, these rocks were different looking mm, compared to mm, yeah, these two. Yeah, yeah. They're very um they're very dark in in, in coloration. Um mm. very different, you know, from the other what would be regular fog forest, you know, stones that protrude under the ground every now and then are, you know, colored grays and so on, you know, very, 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 you know, typical stone coloration. This whatever this is, um it's very dark, almost like a slate colored, uh, you know, stonework. Interesting. Uh, can I pick one up and see if it feels like they're coated with anything, or if they feel, just feel like normal rocks, or...? Ooh. You pick up one of the small hand, hand-sized ones that seems, seems, seems to have chipped off of this, of this, of these larger bits, and it seems to you to be... Give me an intelligence check, Mandy and Gelden. Doing it. See if you can determine what the hell this is. Mmm. Smart boy. Ah. So smart, Mandy and Gelden. What can I say? This isn't obsidian, but it is a um, a type of like volcanic rock that that is the result of you know. Um, Volcan volcanic activity. <clears throat> hmm. Very interesting. Um, I would like to smell the rock to see if it smells like recent volcanic eruption or if it has lost its smell. Oh. Smell that rock. Okay, make make a perception check for me to smell the smell the rock. Man, rolling hot, <laughs> rolling hot tonight. It's a reason. There's a reason I tried to take that leg off. I knew, I knew you were gonna be rolling hot tonight. Oh, man, twenty-two perception. It, mm, it does, it does, mm -hmm. and not only that, but it smells of magic. Oh, smells like it has some type of arcane, you know. There's a, there's a very distinct arcane residue. Interesting. Um, is this like like a massive boulder, or with like some pieces chipped off, or is it like a bunch of small rocks that are like in a pile or something? I mean, right, dude, right enough for twenty-two intelligence and your twenty-two perception. Uh, checking it out from a few different angles and getting a beat on it. Um, you surmise it to be part of some type of structure that mm. that was that was erecting out of the earth and crumbled away. Um, Interesting. You suspected it to have been, you know, due to time, but now that you've gotten a feel for the freshness of the of the materials at at use here, you can. Only logically surmise that it has been destroyed by other means. Interesting. Um, does this? How big is it? Is it like a few feet? Ooh. Or how big is it? It's it's large. It's um. Okay. Seems to you like it was almost two different distinct pieces of of structure potentially. Um, okay. That may be like does, in, intertwined at some point, but you know, it's 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 impossible to tell now. It doesn't seem like there's like a remaining foundation of a building or anything like mm, that. It just seems like no. it's own its own structure. Okay. Yes. yes. Interesting. Um, investi investigating the point where um it meets the ground, it's you know it's difficult to say without doing without doing a proper excavation. It, it'll be hard to tell how you know how deep this material goes to the earth, but since, hmm. you know, since seemingly, well, it's, it's hard to say. It's too, I would say most of the large chunks are too heavy to move. Um, so it's hard to tell if it's, you know, like structurally sound or like deeply set into the earth. Uh, unfortunately. Okay. I will look to Uzgold and ask him if he remembers any structures looking like this in his time in the Fog Force, or if this seems like an anomaly. I definitely don't think I remember anything like that. Hmm. 
interesting. Uh, can I mark this spot on my map? Do I know where I am? <laughs> no, you definitely, you definitely have okay. no idea where you are. You can, you could maybe try to get a get a dialogue with Uzgood going and to try to triangulate your position upon the map, but it's you know no easy feat mm. in the fog forest. Okay, I, I'll I'll discuss with Uzgood. I'll ask him if he. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll show him the map and say, "Do you know where the uh, you know where the tree is? Do you know how far we went? Is it about here? We'll, we'll try to find an estimate location, I guess. If he's cool with that." Okay. Um, off the best of my memory, I'll try and recall how far in of a march it was going into the tree initially. Mm. Um. Do you want a history check or something for that? I would. I would, Master Bonebreaker. A fine suggestion. Let's see. Mm, mm, yeah, I, I would say. I would say with me and Yeldon smarts and your and your navigational intellect, you are able to converge together and get a decent marking for your position. Um. When you move from this location next, I will go ahead and mark some, you know, place some type of marker to uh to show where you guys have been. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, I think I'm done with these rocks, gentlemen. I think we can move on. Something, something, some foul play happened here. It smells of destructive magic, but. Can't see where it could have came from. If I remember it, I'll have to ask Loke here. Hmm. He's sure to have some sort of theory. Foul stinky magic. Hey Mandy, and take a piece of that rock with you. Maybe you can even show Loke here. Hmm. Good idea. I'll pick up one of the hand-sized rocks and shove it in my pocket. A fine pocket idea. Open on your bare skin might be toxic. Uh, good point. I'll put it in my bag of holding instead when Skeezwell mentions the toxicity. Okay. With possibility. Okay. Can add a um. I guess what would be a volcanic stone to your to your bag of holding. Volcanic stone. I guess you could put it in like parentheses, like arcane. I guess just to just gotcha. to make sure it doesn't get confused with anything else. I suppose. How much is that weighing? I'm trying to keep track. Probably a pound. Pro probably gotcha. just a pound. <laughs> Sounds good. It's probably not right, but you know, whatever. You know, don't matter. Hey. Don't matter. It's all good. As long as my bag doesn't explode, that's all I care about. <laughs> Ah. Uh, okay, gentlemen, so you find yourselves around this odd... what could have been maybe a monolith of some kind, or just maybe a natural formation at one point. Um, what would you gentlemen like to do now? A few minutes spent here, and... other than other than some curiosity from Manny and Gelden, there isn't... there seems like there isn't too much to, uh... to find. Um, I'd like to just continue on making this circle around the tree. Mm, okay, very good, very good. So be it, so be it. Another survival check. Who's good bone breaker, please? And more, another perception check. Master Gelden. That's about a good, good hour or two goes by as you guys are getting a nice proper um, what you believe to be Who's good bone breaker, um, circle around the great tree and Mandy and Gildan, that is when you hear something it sounds like cries for help in the distance it seems to you and you look ahead in the direction where these cries are coming from for help and you see spider webs that are strung along the trees oh, no. and up along the branches
I will alert the the team. Let them know. Watch out. I've encountered these creatures before. It's the help spiders. They don't really need help, I swear. Ugh. I want to burn them. <laughs> Probably the best way to get through all this mess. Hopefully it doesn't go for too long. Um, yeah. Which... Is this, like, right in our path? Unfortunately so. It was a good bone breaker. But Mandy Gilden points it out to you before you are too deep along into it, and you have time to choose an alternate route if you desire. Um... Like, how how big does this thing look? Like, does it look like it's easy enough to walk around, or is it like this is a nest? It looks like potentially you could walk around it, but it also does look like a pretty formidable, like, spider-like territory in front of you. You aren't sure how far you'd have to go to get around it. Um, it does seem quite sizable. Um, hmm. I guess I will try and navigate around favoring the like tree side, like inside of the circle. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So be it. And I just look at all these gross webs and just look at Skiswell and you see a spider, you let that fire fly. <laughs> Don't have to tell me twice. Ah, very good. Very good, Crimson Bones. As you just gentlemen are skirting around what you believe to be spider territory. Um, it was good and skis well. You guys can hear the help, help, help. Very faintly, you know, beyond over deep and deep over in the, uh, in the spider territory. But, thankfully, thanks to your precaution, you were able to, after another hour or two, um, skirt around what you believe to be the spider nest and continue pushing on your way. For another good two hours or so, uh, who's good bone breaker? Another survival check, please. And Mandy and Gelden, more perception checks out of you. Ooh. Ooh, beautiful. You are able to, Wuzu Bonebreaker, snake the party perfectly through a briar maze um, without anyone being affected by any by any stretch of the imagination. You also spot what can be a shortcut to the great tree, leading you back home. Um, you also spot a rather clear way forward along your perimeter hunt march. Um, so you have you have rather clear avenues displayed out before you, Mandy and Gelden. You don't pick up much um, as far as your as far as your scout duties are concerned. Um, That's I will point out to the party that shortcut to the tree that I saw, and just you know, if anyone's having any kind of second guess is about the hunt at the moment you know now would be the time if not let's keep going i think we're doing well it's cool let's keep it let's keep it going he was following along perfect yeah. very good very good you gentlemen continue along in the fog forest probably about another hour or two go by um not much re being made out in this time and the sun beginning to set on a rather overcast um what is it Go going on evening at this time that is when it was good bone breaker you sense something. Mandy and Gelden, a perception check from you. Please. No. You sense it as well, Mandy and Gelden. The earth is beginning to shake beneath your feet, gentlemen. Something is rising from the earth beneath you. 
Ooh. Skis will bin bag and Syfax, the defenders. What do you guys desire to do, if anything, in in precaution uh, for, for the party's safety? No, 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 no. <laughs> Skis will start screaming to warn the others of imminent danger. And a, a small, a small panic begins to ensue as, as Syfax, um, engorges into full on panic as these <laughs> strange, um, two creatures emerge out from the earth. It looks like large insectoid, um, beings of some kind. The crimson bones have been set upon in the fog forest once again. It was a trap. Question. Have I seen these before? Ooh, let's get a nature check. It was good bone breaker. Nature or history. It's up to you. I would say, I would say so. I would say so. You know these creatures to be pretty nasty. Uh, you know them by the name Onkegs, and they are these large, um, monstrous, you know, like large, monstrous, like humanoid, um, bug creatures uh, that are known to ambush travelers in the wilderness. You know them to be, uh, not the most formidable of foes, but they are, uh, they are certainly beyond, like, a common pest. And you've got two okay. nice big ones staring you down right now. Um, excuse me, Binbag, I would say you have an opportunity to react as Defender before the combat pops off, if you desire to. Yeah, Skeezo's was gonna mind Spike, the one on the right. Ooh, this one? Nice. Ooh. Sorry, let me point out the one I mean. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one I thought. Uh, hit me up with the deets of the mind spy. Ooh, that looks fucking mean. That looks mean looking. Well, oh. Let's see how the creature does. Has to make yeah, a wisdom to save. Is that correct? Yeah. Creature does not make the wisdom save. That's that's for sure taking the seven psychic damage off the cuff and um, binding it. I know his it. location and mm. uh, he can't become hidden. Oof, very good. Very good, Master Pinbag. And you are also concentrating on this effect. So just do keep that in mind. You can't have two concentration spells up at a time. Um, but the effect you have latched on firmly onto this insectoid creature. Um, and as it pops out of the ground, it almost immediately begins, like, wincing and reaching up with its large, like, lobster-like claws. Um, very good, very good. It is so, it is so. Okay, and with that, gentlemen... <laughs> you may <laughs> <Fire alert. laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, no. Pretty similar, pretty similar. Um, <laughs> and with that, gentlemen, we'll bust down on initiative. Oh, it's down on that mire lurk. Oh, where? My work. My work. My work. Fire lurk, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, damn. Man, Randy Gelden should have been the defender yeah. this time. He is. Just, it's something about skis will be bags, like, alarm alerting you. Um, was enough, to, was, was, was enough to really spring you into action, Mandy and Gelden. Oh, I'm ready. 
Um, what I is it? I need to go to action. That's some kind of creatures coming up from the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. Don't worry. Uh, let's see, Mandy and Gelden, you are gracing us first. What do you desire to do, my friend? Unfortunately, oh. if I'm not mistaken, your blur in your mirror image is gone now, or is probably is, is something yeah, still blur up? is a one minute concentration. Okay. Mirror image is a one minute non concentration. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's been like five hours, so yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, they're probably over. Um, you're, you're starting fresh. <laughs> I will approach, approach this creature on the left and cast Thunder Wave. Oh, so be it. So be Boom. it. Let's see, it's got uh, a constitution, constitution save coming its way. It fails the constitution save, being pushed bang. 10 feet away from you. Skirt, skirt. You can see it's like, it takes its like large mandibles kind of in the ground to hold itself, but it isn't enough as the uh, 13 thunder damage kind of cracks away a little bit of the exoskeleton. Um, nice meaty strike yes. already. Well done, well done. Yes, uh, that will be my turn. Okay, very good. Very good, Master Gilda. So be it. Um, this creature, kind of pissed off about that, um, will definitely attempt to strike back at you. Um, now having a little bit of room to gain some speed. Um, let's see, the creature pushes forth. What exactly can it do? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, interesting. Okay. The creature will attempt to take a bite attack at you. Let's see. Oof, it is unable to do so. Yeah. There you go, as you lurch out of the way. <laughs> Seemingly, you are uh, you are not under any effect from the beast. It was good yeah, over here. You are up, my friend. In between a rock and a hard place, what do you desire to do? Um, I think you already know. Ulzgiv's I... getting rather angry at the sight of these filthy bugs, and enters a rage. Another day, another rage. Um, he will take a step towards Mandian's bug. Okay. Getting toward like the large, you know, like six feet tall. Um, man, very, very like bulky mantis like creature. Um, what do you got? It was good bone breaker. I am going to recklessly attack with a two handed war hammer strike. So be it. So be it. Unleash the fury, Master Bonebreaker. Ooh, a 13 just shy of what you needed to connect. The second strike, though, um, you cock back and you find your mark along the the hip thorax of this of this odd creature. Doing a nasty 14 damage in total. Uh, the creature is looking looking like it's seen better days already. Good. Anything furthermore, <laughs> Master Bonebreaker. I'll just end my turn there. Okay, okay. A strong turn if you ask me. Um, one of these other beasts will move up to Syfax, who has now been left vulnerable on the flank. Oh shit! Syfax draws his short sword and prepares for combat. Uh, let's see. Is there anything about the mind spike that affects how this creature attacks? No. Okay, all right. Very good, very good. Just figured I'd check. Just in case. Uh, poor Syfax won't be so lucky. Uh, the creature comes down for a bite attack upon Syfax. Oh, yeah! Ooh. Yeah, ain't nothing. The mind spike uh, causing the creature to draw a blank in this moment. Um, perhaps a little bit more effective than, perhaps a little bit more effective than one thought. The mind spike of skis will bin bag. Yeah. 
Skis will been back. Speak of the devil, you are up, my friend. What would you like to do? Skis was going to um rush to Syfax's aid Ooh. from afar. Very good. <laughs> um and he's gonna cast this. Oh Ooh. shit. Damn. Damn. You're casting that at uh, Syfax's beast? <laughs> yeah. Very good. So be it. Um, that hits. <laughs> in, case, in case anyone was wondering, for a whopping 15 damage, what damage would you like to do, Master Binbag? You have your choice of fire or lightning damage. Uh, I think I want to do fire. Fire damage it is, so be it. A, a nasty, like, crackling arcane beam you might source right over Syphax's shoulder. Um, let's go! Nice going, Binbag! And it, and it just, like, strikes the beast, um, in, in its odd, you know, very, like, alien-like head, leaving a, leaving a nasty scorch mark and burning its antennae. Anything else, Master Binbag? A successful blow. You're doing great, Syfax. Skeezwell says, running away. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> well done. Yeah, Syfax, you're doing great. You're doing great. Just keep it going, Syfax. Syfax. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> For the Crimson Bones! And Syfax thinking, thinking, thinking he has, um, thinking he has backup, which, you know, he really does. Uh, will attempt to close the distance with this creature and go for a short sword, short sword strike. Ah, he like, strikes into the beast and the creature grabs his sword with its claw. And, uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, oh. And, and there's a bit of an awkward moment. Mandy Gelden, top of the round, we find you back in action once again. Yes. Um, I don't know if that bit was worth getting up for. <laughs> I'm going to punch this beast for my thunder gauntlets. So be it. The old one two yeah. coming its way. The, hey, put that lightning launcher down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wrong, wrong one, wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one, that one strikes for a mean 10 thunder damage. <laughs> Cracking a bit of the carapace. I see the compromised carapace, and I'll take another punch. Oh, wow it. Oh, wow it. Hopefully, trying to finish oh. the deed, uh, your strike ends like an inch before making contact with the creature's exoskeleton, unfortunately. And, okay. there, and there is no connection. Um, anything furthermore, Master Gelden? Um. Nah. <laughs> That'll be it. Very good, so be it, so be it. Let's see, this creature in front of you, wobbling now, uh, bloodied on its last legs, will attempt to bite you once again. A mere eight, a mere eight, it ain't nothing, it ain't nothing. No good, no good. Creature is unable to get its hands on you, Mandy and Gelden. You are wary of getting too close to the creature. Um, what with your armor being compromised. Well, it's good bone breaker. You are up, my friend. Filthy, filthy bugs. And I will continue with my reckless strikes. Very good. So be it. So be it. Ooh. 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 Trying to. Oh, wait. Well, I clicked the wrong one because oh. I'm blind. So be it. So be it. There we go. Oh, yeah, that works. That works a little bit better. <laughs> you cock back your two-handed warhammer and go for a furiously devastating swing, making contact Ooh. with the creature. How does it die? It was good bone breaker. Look at that crit. The warhammer strikes it right in the chest, and its entire exoskeleton just shatters. Like the bark of a tree, like loosens from it, and it just like shatters outward um, in the direction of your blow. Unveiling its soft jelly flesh underneath. Creature's dead. Blizzard will turn his attention towards the other filthy creature. 
and unleashes an infused harpoon. Oh shit! You see, you like see, it's like this thing has this lobster claw um, grabbed upon Cyfax's blade, and you toss your infused harpoon. It strikes right at the joint of where the arm meets the like the upper carapace of the creature, and the arm is torn clean off from the beast. Who is good bone breaker? You savage, savage animal. The insect <laughs> falls to the ground, slain. Damn. Damn. No one touches my back but me. <laughs> Woo! For the Crimson Bones! Cyfax cries out in a victory screech. The as, double crit. As, dude, I got the bugs got double ones and you got the double crit. <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know it's a real six day around here. Hell yeah. <laughs> anyway. As these disturbing exoskeleton beasts fall underneath the combined might of the crimson bones. There is a slight sprinkle that begins to hit the party members as our cloudy sky has turned into a bit of an overcast as we are getting closer into the evening. And the second portion of the great hunt is concluded. Now, my sweet crimson bones, with these dead insectoids at your feet, what is it you desire to do? Manny Gelden would like to drive his steel boot directly into the soft underflesh of this beast's head. Mm. Disturbing. As, as he is frustrated with these large, fragile beasts. Aye! That good me. These little rushes towards the scene, eager to get samples. Hey, Whiskered wants food out of that. <laughs> I'll begin cutting. So be it, gentlemen. Uh, seems like you and Skeezwell are working toward a uh, working toward mutual means here. So uh, why don't we get a survival check from either of you, or one of you with advantage? Your gentleman's Good. choice. Sorry. Advantage. He's always giving me advantage. I guess that's all right. Oh, hey, all right, all right. Very good, very good. So be it. Going about your methods, um, it's very easy to get a generous helping of insect me from the one in which you um shattered its carapace clean off. It's probably uh mm. probably thanks to. Uh, Mandy and Gelden's thunder wave, and then and then uh, then thunder punches, and then of course your bludgeoning strikes. You uh, cracked its shell wide open, and you gentlemen are able to get six raw insect meat rations from one of these creatures. And if you gentlemen want to harvest from the other one, I will have another survival check. It takes about five minutes or so. Well, he, that one took five minutes. This next one will probably take a good ten or so. Um, might as well. I think we're running a little lower on the ration end of things. Okay. Huh. Okay. Huh. So, uh, Ezel, you gonna help me with this one, too? I will. Alright. Don't forget. Ezel eagerly cries. Mm -hmm. So good. Not quite as Man, good. Not is disgusted by the appearance of this this creature's flesh, and I'll make sure he keeps a distance. Yeah, and it's a, um, and it's like a pale green, kind of like booger-colored, like, meat. Um, and it's very, like, um, what is it, like, octopus-like, I, I suppose? <laughs> so it's kind of, like, kind of like raw, like, octopus, or like raw squid, kind of, in, in, like, texture. Um, and you gentlemen get another three raw insect rations worth, uh, of meat from that second creature as well. And I will, um, I will split that in half with these well. Excellent. Excellent. It's not a round number, so I give him four. 
So be it. So, so be it. And do do keep track of them as being insect meat, gentlemen. It has different properties than your regular everyday meat. Yep. It is. It might make a difference. How much do you have it weight? Um, I just did one, like a ration. Four. Mandian, is there anything you're up to while the party takes a good 15 minutes gathering their insect jelly meat? Um... Mandian's just gonna sit there with his arms crossed and say, Hey, you guys done shucking squid yet? Hurry up. And then... No, oh, he's gonna hang out. He's gonna take a breather for once. Okay, yeah. Syfax will come, uh, Syfax will f f find his way wandering over towards you. Um, let's go. Damn, Mandian. That was, that was pretty, pretty crazy hunt we're going on here. Uh, Syfax, I gotta say, I'm quite impressed with your performance. I don't know what you mean. an adventurer once, once and for all. Oh, shit. Oh, man, I'm honored. I'm honored, really. You know, you guys, you guys are pretty badass. I wasn't sure I was gonna get along with um, with with big old Lewis Gould and and nasty old skis well, but you know they're 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 really starting to grow on me. If I dare I say it. Well, if you keep getting in there and fighting me these beasts solo, we'll have the respect as long as you want. Man, I'm not gonna lie, Manny Gelden. I was I was pretty worried when I saw you get absolutely obliterated by that energy beam. <laughs> Oh, this? Oh, nothing my suit can't take. Just a bit of a so. flesh wound, and I'll show off my groin to Syfax as well. Oof, oh, whoa, oh man. But if that happened to my groin, I'm sure I'd be dead. Ah. <laughs> Your skin looks tough as nails, I'm sure you can take it. Oof, well, I... Don't lie to him, Mandian. Hey. Hey, quiet, quiet, yeah, quiet, Skeezball will been back. Skeezball skis well is right, you, you'd be fucked. But hey, it's the confidence that matters. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm gonna be confident. That's right. Just as confident as you sing those words to us. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should start inspiring myself. That's a good idea, yeah. Mandian. Oh yeah, great idea, Mandian. Now he's gonna inspire himself all over the place. Hey! <laughs> Why don't you slurp up your jelly? Ha! Huh. Yeah, why don't you shuck that squid ski as well? I, I join in on the on the fun. Syfax goes for the high five, Andy Gilden. <laughs> I'll smack him with my metal glove. <laughs> Those good looks a little jelly off his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and after after a, after a few minutes, um harvesting team you guys have wrapped up unless there's any other mementos excuse uh who is good bone breaker that you want to take with you um you have you have harvested the the vast majority of the meat these filthy things don't have bones on the inside i don't <laughs> need them very good very good and as such gentlemen what is the plan daylight is very quickly declining and it seems like uh maybe time for camp to be made somewhere yep. something we're still in this webbed nightmare right should probably get mm -hmm. out of this area you, you you have circumvented the web nightmare and carried and carried on like an hour or two from from being around there so hopefully oh, hopefully, okay, okay. hopefully you'll be all right um, but that being said, you, um, uh, you know, these insects did pop out of the ground at your feet in this area, so this, this particular location may not be much better. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should try to find some solid ground to make camp on instead. Something without insect burial grounds. Something a little more stony. Hmm. Yeah, something Perhaps. like that. I'm sure you know a place who's cool. Do you know a place like this place like the back of your hands? I guess um I'd dedicate like fifteen ish minutes to looking around for a 
harder ground, maybe even more stone if possible. Okay, all right. Give me, give me a, uh, give me a plain Jane survival track. See how well you do. Pretty good. Pretty good. You find like a decently sized, kind of slanted along, almost like Pride Rock esque um, area that might be the perfect thing to climb up on and rest for the evening if you're worried about things coming up from underneath you, that is. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah that, I guess so. Let's start setting up camp, homies. Sounds good to me. Syfax will pitch in and do what he can in the, in the camp procedure. Very good, very good. Um, Any particulars Mandy, or...? Mandy would like to take off his suit for um, camp preparations today, because he definitely thinks it needs a break. And uh, he's going to go on his semi-annual walk around the camp without his suit on for some stretching and he'll try to find some fuel for a fire fire while he's out there very good very good you do find the rain slowly beginning to pick up it seems to you as as time is carrying on though it is um it is refreshing to you at this at this moment in time and you find yourself quickly um going for a bit more of a brisk walk and making sure to try to gather some kindling along the way as you do so. Give me a survival check, Master Gelden. Just to see how well sure. you're doing, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty, yeah. You, know, you, have a, you have a suitable amount of kindling just from passively picking some up as you're making your way in a bit of a, in a bit of a mind-clearing walk in the, in the rather cool fog forest. Very good. Anyone else up to anything in particular? Um, I'd like to start cooking this raw insect meat. Ooh, ooh, very good, very good. So be it, so be it. Syfax will turn away from such a display as it will be grotesque. Um, very good, Master Bonebreaker. Give me a survival check. Skeezel wants to help too. Skeezel wants to use his magical herbs and spices. Oh! And he wants to cook his meat. All right. Very well. Very well. Fucking, you just got advantage. Who is good bone breaker? Wait. Am I cooking your rations too, cheese yeah. bow? Awesome. Pro <laughs> seeing it best, it probably you know take care of it all in one go. You almost kind of um. Find some nearby uh, edible leaves to to wrap it in to make only the, almost these type of like these crunchy like jelly wraps, um, and taking your time and, and patience, give, giving it more of a slow cook, as to not you know burn off the 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 jelly meat substance that is this insect meat. How how many raw rations do you have? In total? There's nine between the two of us. Okay. I would say you end up with six cooked insect rations. All said and done. You lose three and in the I'll process. Do that as well. You lose uh, you lose a mere three in the Evo process. Probably about the best you could have done. Fresh and hot. Oh, okay. Very good. Uh Thank goodness it was a good bone breaker for to put on some type of other texture to just just surround it and move something else these these small crunchy edible like fern leaves uh, will simply have to do um, and your herbs and spices come in come in clutch master bin bag it's okay it's okay. It, you know, it could be, could be better. Could be worse. It's kind of like a very, very gooey, like grilled cheese, almost. But without any of the good parts about it. <laughs> okay. And with that, gentlemen, your insect meat cooked. Um, Manny and Gelden, you've you've returned from your kindling gathering. Is there anything else, gentlemen? 
before we rest for the evening and just assign our watches as such. Um, is Mandy able to start work on his suit even either even during his watch? <clears throat> is there anything you could do? Is it going to require material? It's probably going to require the material and, and you're really sitting down and focusing on it. Mm -hmm. Probably doing it in the rain won't be very helpful either. Probably not. Unfortunately, you, you, you think it's probably to best to uh best to wait. That's just fine. Unfortunately. I'll have to wait. That's fine. <laughs> huh. With this gentleman, as time pushes ever further on, who's going to take first watch of the night? Mandian would like to take first watch. Oh. Okay. Very good. Will anyone join Mandian Gelden, or will it be Syfax? Who's good would like to go to bed? You all will join Mandy and Ooh. Oh. Golden. Good. Syfax will nice. retire as well. Mandy and will remain out of his suit until the morning. He will go through the watch suitless. Ooh. Damn. Very good. Uncheck my suit. Okay. Very good. When the reduction to my armor class, is that done to the suit? Or is it that done, done to my to armor class in general? Okay. It was just done to the it. suit, yep. Like, yeah. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, and I will stick by the fire during this rainy evening. And uh, I don't really have anything to work on Skeezwell's stuff either. Oh, I mean, I guess... I guess you could get started with that, because that's, that's a much simpler, uh, much simpler project. You brought the metal with us? I think you may, it might be in your bag of holding. You can check. Maybe. If you didn't put it in there, then I guess not. But I could have sworn you did. It's hard to, I don't I quite know. recall. I don't know. Uh, I mean, if you're not feeling it, then. I don't see it. I see uh, a letter from House to Car. Yeah. <laughs> before my volcanic stone so I don't know well, well very good then very good then you may, you may very well have left some of the metal material back at home thinking you know not much of it I suppose so um yeah I think we decided to do it when we came back I uh can I look at this creature tail during my my uh wash sure. and see if I can learn anything about it sure sure how? Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you are you like just gonna analyze it, or you know, what's the? Yeah, I'd uh... like to analyze it. I'm really interested about the energy releasing properties. Let's see if there's any channels or nerves or glands that ca create the energy. You know, just just try to mm -hmm. understand it a bit. Okay. Okay. So you give me any inspiration. So be it. So be it. Um, give me a intelligence check, flat. Intelligence check, flat. Damn, and you go, you psycho. Eighteens, <laughs> all night. All night. All right. You think that dissecting this thing will probably be the best way to unveil its secrets to you. Mm. But, you know, unable to, well, <clears throat> you probably do have the ability to dissect it, but not in any way that is, um, Probably, probably clean or safe, but just mm. from taking your time and really, really checking it out. You eventually determine that the keratin that encompasses like the outer shell of this strange, like bulbous, like cudgel of a tail that was on that creature is none of this earth. Indeed, you suspect the beast that you encountered to be some type of extra planar, you know, force. Some, you know, some some creature from from beyond this world. Interesting. Do I, um... Does it give off a... 
a smell uh sim different than the creature of the the scent of the creature in general not re not really there's still there's still okay. an excellent hint of um of the terrible stench of um of that horrible beast do i feel the same arcane energy as that destroyed structure that i came across you do interesting it's true very it interesting. true manny and gelden that it, it is the case hmm Maybe we did this for some good. Seem to be ransacking this place. Very interesting. I wonder if there's more. Okay. And without dissecting the thing, um, in particular, you will not be able to gleam any more information from it, you don't think? I'll have to wait until, uh,. I can show it to Lokir, or use his facilities, so... I'll hold on to it, knowing that I'm starting to draw some links. Mm, mm, yeah, you find... You f it's amazing what you can find when you, uh, when you... when you all of a sudden find yourself with not much else to work on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, very good, Andy and Galden, and you'll be happy to know that you are... Watch goes by relatively uneventfully. Is there, uh, is there anything nice. you and Skeezel have been bag or talking about, pray tell? Um, I'm talking about how I'm disappointed that I found my suit is not impervious. Because I didn't think it could take as much damage so easily. But maybe it's only creatures of this type from another world. Maybe even from the world my suit came from. Uh, oh, Mandy and Mandy and... The center cannot hold. Things fall apart. Tin and iron. But the stuff of men. That's what can't be broken. Skizuo says, eating snacks from his pouch. As inspirational as uh, your words are, Skizuo. My manuscript said nothing about the unbreakability of man. So, I remain skeptical. Well, to something to I mean, that. we do die, but, oh. I mean, like... Is this one of your metaphors, Skeezo? Well? Children and all that, you know, we, like, they keep going. No. Oh. I'm thinking well, of like scientific unbreakability, Skeezo. Well, well Wait, I didn't don't say I was a scientist. No. Oh. Certainly seem to know your, know your way around the arcane like one, so... I don't know what to make of you. Was it stolen? Like all of your funds? I don't know what you're talking about. Your knowledge skis well. You know great power. You seem to know a little of it. It's very interesting. <laughs> He's well stoically. Uh, munches on his snack. Damn. Damn. Very good. Very good. Excuse me, then they seemingly slithered away from another from another verbal confrontation. Man, <laughs> Gelden prodding, man, prodding, <laughs> more than usual. He's uh, a slippery one that skis well. He says under his breath. And at this point, gentlemen, you are, your watch has concluded. Um, rather uneventfully, you find your you find that the evening is rather still. And being kind of, you know, you feel almost kind of separated away being up upon this little rock perch from the rest of the surrounding environment. And it's time to rouse the second watch team. Very good, very good. Syfax and Ulsgood, you are awoken by Skis Wolbenbeg and Mandy and Gildan for your for your watch this evening. All right. Bluesgood will wake up and do 20 push-ups. Cool. Cyfax to do so as well. Oh man, oh, whoa, 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 oh, okay. Okay, you just, you just, you just, you just, why you, you just watch. You just watch me do it. <laughs> it's inside. It's inside. Facts. 
Well, well, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do as you ask. Certainly not wanting to disappoint, especially not first thing in the morning. That's, uh, you know, he's shown stronger displays. Um, but thankfully, yeah, you know, you find that he is spending more time, uh, more time focusing on himself and not really watching you as much, which is fortunate, because you find yourself a little bit sluggish this morning as well. Um, mm hmm Come in, you know, the, the great hunt has, has seemingly, you know, taken a little bit of its toll upon, upon the party, at least as far as, uh, fatigue is concerned, and, you know, you, you, you are, you are certainly feeling the burn of, of, yes, of yesterday's hunt. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to double check. Uh, I got my rages back, correct? Ooh, yes. Or no. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I think cool. you usually take first watch, so yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yep, yes. And that that reminds me, Syfax um gets back some stuff too. Excellent. Okay. Is there any uh any, any anything particular tonight, Master Bonebreaker, that you desire to do? Seems like Skis will bit uh seems like Syfax is a bit more um chillax this this morning um was good urges syfax to come along and we'll do a little patrol around the camp hmm. sounds good to me and uh syfax will follow suit why don't you give me a uh, a nice perception check master bonebreaker um, I'll roll my 15 passive. Very good. So be it. So be it. Um, you don't make out too much in the nice, calm, cool, early morning within the fog forest. Um, the stillness after a rainfall uh, is poignant and calming. Um, quite the change of pace that, that, that one would expect. You can hear the... the f Every now and then, the faint, far-off calls of, of the great beasts of the fog forest, but they, uh, they are certainly nowhere near, you know, um, okay. nowhere near the party at this time. Good. Sweet sounds um, of Struthio and Gally Mimas. Wolfsgood would like to ask Syfax... So, uh, you know of anything pretty strong out here? You know, uh, anything in your travels that you ever come across? Maybe a creature or a person that, uh, seemed too strong? Hmm. Person that was too strong. I'm looking for anything that I could, uh, you know, perhaps help my allies fight and perhaps take the bones of. I don't know, Wisco Bonebreaker. I, I have, I have to be honest with you, my friend. You know, you've, you've taken me to see, prob probably most of the sights that that I've ever seen. Really, you know, I've, I've only gone ever as far as Garza. Um, and I saw some pretty Those stories, my friend. Oh, tales of old. Oh, jeez. Um, I can't say I really know any. That Waldwin guy that you guys kind of rolled into town with uh he he said he knew a story or two um and Quagon was telling a pretty good one the other night though I don't I don't really remember too much of it I'll tell you what I did hear one day uh Beric Dondarian talking about Scaramouche Scaramouche Ooh. the powerful I think it was sounded like he was pretty impressed with him and if Beric Dondarian was impressed with someone then you know He's probably a pretty impressive guy. Um, Wilsgood takes out his journal and would like to note that name. Very good. I will, uh, get the spelling for you. <laughs> it's a bit of a, cool. it's a bit of a mouthful. And with that being said, Wilsgood says, you don't really know too much about a lot of creatures around here. Let me share the tale the legendary beast Krakota. 
the great white boar. Oh, it's that back some wings in it, this. Um, <laughs> eager, eager to no hear your tale. relates the tale that he heard when he was younger of a great white boar large enough to fell trees. And Ulsgood tells him that he wishes to one day meet this creature and to consume it and take its bones. Oh, whoa. Syfax kind of has a moment of a moment of reflection upon hearing your story. He's like, man, that's that's great. Oh, whoa. You know, I think I remember I think I remember Logan telling me that his wife was killed by a great white beast. Oh, you don't say. I don't, I don't, I hardly doubt that it could have been the same thing, but you know, that, that old bastard was never the same ever since his wife got taken from him. Hmm. Good to know. Hmm. So I, I don't know if we'll ever be back to refugees rest. I wonder how Arvel's doing. I've wondered that myself. He's got to be doing just fine, though. Hopefully those little dragon people haven't snuck into the tavern and cut his throat while he slept. That would have been fucked. I worry about that, too, but if we ever go back there and find that, they'll all die. You could say that again. I'm sure he's fine. Good old Silvergills ain't gonna let him down anytime soon. Yeah, he's pretty strong. Hmm. You don't wanna fuck with Silvergills. I don't think I ever beat him in an arm wrestle, not even one time. He even let me use both my hands a few times. Still couldn't win. I'm not afraid to admit it, though. That guy was, you know... That's, that's one tough lizard. I can agree with that. Um, and as such, Master Bonebreaker, if there's, unless there's any more conversing or patrolling you wanted to do with Syfax, you know, uh, I'm I'm rather pleased to say that the Night's Watch goes by once again, you know, ra rather uneventfully. Um, and it isn't long until the very early morning comes to comes to greet the Crimson Bones, and you are all roused from your from your early morning slumber and here gentlemen is where we will take our break for right now yeah. bum, bum, bum. not ready we're from which we last had our break sweet sweet crimson bones you gentlemen had all just roused in the morning in the fog forest. <clears throat> Everyone successfully completing a long rest, regaining all abilities, hit dice, spells, and etc. You gentlemen all find yourselves rather rather rested in this morning of the fog forest and it's rather pleasant for for being in the fog forest anyway and you gentlemen are left to your own devices with seemingly breakfast about to be had very good oof mini gelson will definitely warm up his ration on the on the coals very good. For consuming it. Very good. As you may. You know how you like it. You know how you like I it. I do. Okay. Master Binbag, will you be partaking in breakfast as well? I will. <laughs> I, I assumed as much. But it's my job to make sure. Everyone fed for your for your upcoming adventuring day. You gentlemen spend about an hour or two amongst yourselves conversing, having breakfast. Any any particular topics being discussed? 
Um, yeah, Wolfsgood would like to just ask Skeezville Bin Bag the same question he asked Syfax. Is there any, uh, bad boys in your life? Or any crazy creatures you've heard of that you might want to slay that should be brought to my attention? I only want to slit the purses of the rich and take what's mine. Okay. As long as you okay. destroy anyone in my way, we'll get along just fine. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. Who's good? Puts his journal away. <laughs> mm. Just as you were wrapping up your wrapping up your writing, um, Master Bonebreaker, you notice Mandy and Gelden comes to attention. Um, as Mandy and Gelden, I'm not if I'm not mistaken, you have the Sending Stone Beetle, do you not? I do. Well, it is at this this time it begins to ring audibly. The oh. Mandy Gelden picks the the beetle out of his belongings and lifts it up to his face as such you clutch listens. it <laughs> you you clutch it upon upon your person and listening allowing the allowing the sending signal to, to come forth and enter into your person it is the sound of Plagon Brolin gosh don't know where you guys are I hope you're well I awoke this morning to find Woke here, Bitterroot, missing. I don't think anything is wrong. I, I can only assume he left on his own. I expect to hear from you soon. And that is where the message from Quagon Brolin ends. <clears throat> it is the ascending spell, um, Master Gelden, and you are familiar with it, so you, um... You know that you can utter a utter a short reply if you desire. I respond to Claygon saying, "Well, this is not the best of news, but don't go anywhere. Just make sure, make sure the tree is safe. I'm sure Loki will be fine wherever he is. We'll be back, hopefully, by nightfall." And I will relay the message that Claygon gave me to the group with my concerns. Missing? Oh, what does that even mean? He's like an old man, right? Where, where, you know, where the heck did he go? Wool's good says double time, boys. Let's pack up and go. Oh shit! Some sense side facts. <laughs> Gets his pack upon upon his upon the shoulders of his slender frame, and she sh sheathes his short sword, and he's ready to go. He's uh, man packing. Yeah, Manning gets right up and goes immediately to his suit and starts the long process of double timing it into a suit. Okay. Very good. Very good. Syfax will uh, lend a hand. Oh, thanks, Cyfax. What do you second do? Come on, hurry up. We don't want to make Uwe Squid Bonebreaker mad. <laughs> and, 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 he, and he goes about doing what he can. Um, and you you actually notice, a, uh, you know, other, rat, other than usual, uh, it seems that Cyfax's assistance is, in fact, of doing just that. Um, assisting, oh, quite, assisting indeed. Your dawning suit time is cut in half as it as it ought to be. And you gentlemen are ready to step off in the direction of the great tree, I can only assume. Yep. Mm hmm Very good. Master Bonebreaker, give me a survival check. And Master Gelden, a perception check, if we're rolling with the same travel rolls, which I can only assume we will be. I imagine this will be the formation, at least for the fog forest. <clears throat> yeah. For, uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay, Master Bonebreaker, you are able to, um, with a little issue, you know, pick up on the pick up on the scent of the great tree and and begin, you know, 
casting the party down over in that direction. Um, Mandy and Gail knew of a hard time being able to catch out anything in, in the distance or, or, or any type of details, really. Um, trying to keep pace with the Bull School Bonebreaker. He is, in fact, double timing it. Um, pushing in the direction of where he believes home to be in earnest. Um, let's see here. Uh, your footfalls are rather true and righteous, Master Bonebreaker, as you lead the party. Ooh, probably a good... For the next few hours or so, um, cir circumventing any danger you find. Let's see, one... A good three, three and a half hours or so pass. Um, the sun looks like it's just about getting to noon as you make your way back to the great tree. Um, you kind of pass through a very similar, very, rather subtle threshold and, and the biome and, and atmosphere changes into a bit more of a wetland. And you are in the rather comforting swamp of Lokir Bitterroot's great tree once again. You gentlemen are greeted with the clucking of chickens, um, who seem, seem to be about, um, recently freed to go about their, go about their way. And, uh, Waldwin and Quagon can be seen by the front porch of the Great Tree. Blizzgood would like to approach Quagon, asking for his beetle back, and asking... What exactly you saw here this morning while we were gone? Ooh. Pagon is more than happy to, um... Go along with, you know, he, he hands you back the beetle. He's like, oh, well, you know, we just, just woke up this morning and, and he was gone from his bed. We checked on him. We usually check on him every morning and, you know, every night before we go to sleep. Um... Didn't seem like there were any real changes to me, and then all of a sudden he was gone. Okay. <clears throat> and Ulusgood will turn around and go look for frequented spots by Loki or Bitterroot. Ooh. Ooh. Very good. Very good. You check out all the usual areas. Um... You even, first things first, you check up high and, and go about the very, um, the very tips of the tree, um, or, well, you know, as, as high, as high as the inter interior stairwell, uh, leads you. Eventually, you get up to a point very high in the great tree where the interior stairs, um, end, and the exterior stairs begin, and, 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 and you know, there's a... Precarious, <laughs> like like no guardrail, um, you know, exterior stair that leads, you know, all the way up to like some some of the, you know, almost halfway up to the great tree, and you don't even know what lays up there as you as you've never gone up that, you know, up that high before. Um, at a certain point, you just have to climb, you know, if you want to get up to the very higher branches of the great tree. Um, you know, it's a, uh, and, and you, and you know it, not a place to, you know, you don't know if Will Keep It goes there or not, because you've never been there, <laughs> you know, and so, yeah. so you, 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 you don't imagine he frequents that location, um, but you know, you go up as high as you can, checking a few of the, uh, you know, upper stairs, you know, storage areas, not finding much, coming back down, um, you, 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 you know, you, you're gonna spend a few good minutes doing this, as... Who's good Bonebreaker is going about his righteous duty of hunting down his his insane master. Um, what, are the, what are the other party members up to? Anything anything at all? Uh, Skeezo is going to secure the supplies inside the tree. Oh, very good. Very good. Any, anything in particular, Master Binbag? Just like the bags, I guess. Skeezo is going in. Oh, okay. All right. 
Very good. Very good. So, yeah, so be it. So be it. Um, Mandy and Gelden would like to check out his uh, Lokir's bedroom. See if I can oh. find any trace of anything, any notes left, any okay, anything, any traces right. of them. All right, you you will aid it was a bone breaker in the in the investigation. You can make an investigation check, man. You got since you're very good. Since you're going for something in particular here. Oh my god! <laughs> Every time, I do. Every fucking time. Is that like More four 22s. in a row? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, no, Jesus yeah. Jesus Christmas! Making so me many twenty twos. Making me sick. <laughs> What's going on tonight? <laughs> bet, dude, bet, bet on, bet on twenty-two wherever you can. Yeah, no kidding. Jesus. <clears throat> anyway, um, you take a poke around as you hear the the squeaking of Uzga Bonebreaker as he as he makes his way downstairs, and Uzga, you uh, you know, you peer into into Wilkier's room to find you know to find a to find a Manny Gelden, right? You know. R rather curiously poking around and you know like w lifting up like the moss the moss like sheets and like a few, few like fireflies or whatever come out you um you notice a pretty mean looking snake under, under, underneath underneath the bed of Manny and Yeldon and you are uh, you uh quickly avert yourself from that as uh, as it was good enters into the <laughs> enters into the area so there's all manner of creepy crawlies hidden around uh hidden around the area so one has to be careful with what you know with with what with what one disturbs um, <laughs> and uh you know but you don't see um I mean, yeah, 22 investigation. I mean, fuck me. Let's see. I mean, 22 is pretty goddamn high. I would say, Mandy and Gelden, that you notice one or two white feathers on a nearby windowsill of Lokir Bitterroot's rum. Interesting. Um... I would like to. Are there the outside? Uh, there's one like kind of like precariously, like, you know, fluttering on the sill itself, and one on on the interior, on okay. the floor. Uh, I will pick one up, examine it, and show it to Uzgold, and see if he recognizes these feathers. Who's good bone breaker? Mandy and Gelden shows you these what looks to be the rather beautiful white wing feathers of of some type of like large owl of some kind. Is it a um a familiar form of low keys to <laughs> Wool's good? Mm. Perhaps. That's interesting, dude. I would say. I would say. Okay. It, it it seems it seems like it could be likely to you that you know perhaps he, you know, turned into a fucking animal and you know left on his own accord. It is it is a. Uh, it, ha it has happened. <laughs> Where did you find this, Mandian? Oh, uh, this one was on the floor, but. Look up there. I point to the windowsill. Maybe you got out that way. It's like a small, like circular, you know, like cut out windows that 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 adorn almost every um, room that touch that touches the exterior of the of the great tree. And there is indeed a you know small fluttering white feather there of very similar make. That's about it. Um, I was going to like to head outside to uh that part of the house outside mm. Mm. now Lokir's room is um Lokir's room is like above the guest room so so it, it is a little ways up the story up mm. Mm. um is it still like somewhat you know that window and whatnot visible from somewhere outside yeah yeah yep yeah let's like just go see if there's any any more feathers and if they're going in a certain direction oh okay all right give me a uh give me an investigation check was good bone breaker as 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 you as you hunt around the area Ooh. 
you you don't find any <clears throat> and you feel like they'd be rather you know rather obvious to spot you know to spot truth be told but you don't see any and you are able to make a uh, positive visual id with the with that higher up window of Lokir's room you know from from the exterior ground level um and no no you know you you don't spot much um i'd like to just take a quick glance around it any peculiar cracks or footprints maybe no no nothing to speak of okay you know it's rather clean if anything i will head back in and tell them i don't see anything else out there Uh, Mandian will tell Uskul that, you know, maybe this means that Lokir's feeling better and he just had some business to attend to. I'm sure he'll be back if he left on his own accord. Perhaps. You guys kind of gathered um, now in the, uh, in, in the central main ground level chamber of the, of the great tree where there's ample room for, for all of you to converse. Um, Claygon enters into the fray from beyond the beaded curtain into the into the room as well. Watch out, ladies! Woo! The, oh. the sweet the sweet hunk of man known as Claygon Brolin in full display. Let's go. Stendar. You guys find anything? And. Uh... Well, found some feathers up in his room. Whether they're from him or whatever other creatures he keeps around here, we're not sure, but it explains him leaving without you noticing. I figured it'd be pretty hard for him to slip out. Especially with all the noise he was making in his sleep. I'm surprised it didn't wake us up. Can't say I'm shocked you didn't notice. I mean, he could be that snake under his bed right now, and we'd never know. He could be anything. I'm a snake under his bed? Shit, I didn't, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. Did he see that? <laughs> you? You know. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I I would say yes, but you you, you don't think it was Loki or Bitterroot. Okay. Just some of the, <laughs> you know, you know just, just, just some, just some of the, uh, the fauna of the of the great tree in display. It does, you know, you from the from the, you know, incoherent ravings you've heard Loki or Bitterroot say about it. You know, there are, uh, you know, it seems like the great tree kind of supports its own ecosystem, you know, to an extent. And there's species of creatures and so on that Loki or Bitterroot told you about that reside exclusively, you know, way high up upon in the in the branches of, you know, of the great tree. <clears throat> so, you're, you know, you're not shocked to find any manner of, you know, miscellaneous creature here and there. Um, oh, yeah. It is. Um, so it is. are there any creatures that can fly down low, perhaps even on the ground level? I mean, that, 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 you, that you know of specifically? Yeah, like if I walked outside right now, are there any birds or creatures that can fly, mm. even an insect? Mm -hmm. Um, I, w I would say not. I mean, there are there are the chickens, but, you know, they their their aerial prowess is is, is quite limited. Um, not even say a firefly hanging around in the. Uh... In the tree somewhere. Well, yeah, I mean, there are, there are, there are, there are a plentiful amount of fireflies. That is true. That is true. That is true. That is true. So, I'm just wondering how prudent this would be. Um, mm. I'm basically, I want to cast my um, my beast sense ritual. Oh. Mm. 
go on. I'd like to find a firefly and grasp it in my hands and start this ritual. Ooh. And, uh, let's see. Okay, okay. Ooh. Okay. I mean, is the firefly willing? It's hard. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's that, 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 that's a hard thing to call. I mean, I would say no, but I, I want this to work. So, so, you know, in this case, you know, I'll allow it. You know, I mean, the fucking, the firefly really doesn't have a choice. And it is a low cure bitterroot firefly. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it has some concept of a, <laughs> Of, of of you as a as a friendly force, so maybe it is willing. <laughs> well, it's worth a shot. <laughs> it's, it's worth a shot, you know. Like, hey, hey, you know, like you know, let's 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 go for it. Um. Okay. All right. So you go you go about this ritual, and, th and this and this may take a little while. Um. The rest of the crimson bones. What do you guys desire to do as? Uzuka Bonebreaker's getting in touch with this inner firefly. Oh, um... What time do we make it back at? Is it is it getting dark? I would say it is about noonish. Oh, okay. Well, we made a decent time. I would like to, uh... I, I, Mandy himself is confident that Loki will find his way home. So he's gonna start going outside and harvesting some of that metal. And, uh... Mm. Start putting it to use finding good parts for uh, Skiswell's plans as well as parts for my suit repair. Okay. That'll All need right. to get started on eventually. Okay. Why don't you give me a uh, survival check, Mandy and Gelden? Very good. Well. Oof, you know, not the best. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take you a little while to even gather the materials. Uh, maybe, mm. maybe you could ask someone for assistance uh, to give you a hand to help, to help expedite this. Uh, I would love for, uh, Cyfax's help. Ah, not only will he help me get the wood, he'll help pass the time <laughs> with his beautiful songs. Yeah, he'll do, he'll, yeah, he'll, he'll do just that. Um, okay. All right. Very good. Very good. So be it. So be it. And with that, uh, Master Binbag, is there anything that you wanted to do? During this interval, in particular. Um, anything Skizo wants to do. Uh, Skizo is gonna rest for this period. Mm. Okay, very good. If so did we did. I, I regained everything from that long mm. rest. Too, you right? did as well. You did as well. That and and then some. Dare I say it? <laughs> Whoa. Huh. Um, Master Bonebreaker, I would say that you are, uh, you are at the point, uh, that, that you, you know, your, your meditation has become, you know, <laughs> you have achieved synchronicity with the Firefly that, that is questioned in your hands, and, and you slowly open up the palm of your hand, um, the Firefly lifts into the air, and you are seeing through the vision of the Firefly. Perfect. <laughs> it just should, should like... be said. Uh, I don't know how, you know, how, how well a Firefly can see. I, I can only assume, you know, not, you know, not the best. Um, you know, but probably not the worst. But you know, it's you—it's definitely working. A, a a successful casting of the spell. Perfect. I would like to use this firefly to explore the higher up parts of the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, you are you you do your best to uh. To subconsciously urge the beast to to, to to move its way upward, and it, you know it has a hard time. It doesn't you know it doesn't go the fastest. 
and, and it certainly it certainly doesn't have the greatest um the greatest sight either um <laughs> but you know hey you may uh you may very well be making some make some progress eventually any gelden over the progress of a you know good good 40 minutes or so um you've disassembled another like two of these nasty looking like metallic spike urchins um and have and have gathered quite a bit of scrap metal as a result very good i would say you have like i don't know like 50 units of scrap metal to play with nice you have quite a lot at this point 50 units how much does a unit weigh shit that's a great question i think you have some scrap in your inventory don't you dare i say uh, it i think i removed it oh i do yeah you're right no, ha ha half a pound per unit <clears throat> you're right i have all that already let me just remove see ya so you have quite a bit to play with at this point um very good do <laughs> i uh <laughs> Do I have as do I know estimates of how much uh, how many units of scrap metal it takes to make uh, each thing or repair my suit? Ooh, let's see. Skis well bin bags little little spear throwing device. Um, you th you think will take like a good five scrap metal or so because some of it can be subsidized with with wood, but but the mm -hmm. majority of it was you know is going to be um nice nice solid me metallic um portions to, to make it nice and sturdy and hopefully uh re really worth uh you know the effort of crafting it so probably only a good five scrap for that and then you'll probably take a good like 30 or so to repair your armor up to its up to its prior condition gotcha 30 30 30 and it will probably take a good day or two just for the armor alone. Gotcha. Master okay. bin bag spear crafting device will probably take a day or so. Perhaps half a okay. day if all goes excellent way. Nice. Now, my suit repairs, too. I don't need to do those all at once, right? I can split that time up. Um, hmm. Oh, Maybe not while I'm actively wearing it. Maybe... If, if I'm not wearing it the entire time, I can do it in chunks. Mm, mm, yeah, 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 sh yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, if, if you want, if you want. If you would like to, if you would like to. Yeah. Of course, uh, you... I was thinking of getting started on my suit repairs now and then. Mm. You know, going to going to sleep and then finishing them in the Naturally. morning or something. You know? OK, all right. Um, Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, just do your best to keep track of it, <laughs> I, I suppose. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll do likewise. Um, well, let's that see. will be uh, Mannion's efforts for a while. He wants to get his suit back okay, up to that's, shape. Okay, that's that's your that's your immediate project. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let it be known that it is the twenty fifth of last seed. Um. So by like noon time on the twenty seventh of last seed, all going well you will have uh completed this armor repair gotcha lord willing um it was a good bone breaker over the course of like many gelden's crafting time these 40 odd minutes or so um this poor firefly has probably only made it up like you know halfway you know up up the great tree um the, the poor thing is struggling now as, as like the atmosphere is getting you know less and less and the wind is is ever more gnarly as 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 one gets up the great tree and the small little beating winds wings of this insect you know it's uh it's it's going along but it's you know it's struggling it's not like the little engine that could right now okay you can make out like the very the very faintness of some of some high 
some, you know, some moving shapes that are that are kind of passing in front of the sun every now and then. Uh, still, still quite a good distance away. And from here, they look quite small. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Yeah, um, and I guess I'll see how far I can go within the hour. Okay, all right, very good, very good. Just reckon you have about like 20 minutes or so. Um, so, man, yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. <clears throat> And with this, I, I, I don't know, man, you're, you're getting started with your armor crafting immediately. That is the plan, yes. Very good, very good. You 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 go about doing so, I would say, with with a little delay. Um, Excellent. Dedicating a good 20 minutes or so already. Um, so my smith's tools help me. <laughs> I would say, I would say so. I would say so, nice. as usual, as usual. Give me a... Uh, why don't you give me a survival check, Mandy and Gelden? Sure. Mm. That'll give you like a plus two, thanks to your thanks to your smithing tools. Nice. So, so you know, here you'll you'll be making progress. If you keep keep at this pace for the rest of the day, you'll uh you'll, you'll have a good portion of the work finished. Excellent. And with about twenty minutes of work going by and twenty minutes of buzzing along the great tree. Master Bonebreaker, rather suddenly, you are abrupted out of your meditation. The hour casting of the Beast Sense ritual has finally come to its closure. You've gained a little intel, but not really as much as you were hoping for. Okay. Um, and you spot Mandy and Gelden as he is going about his procedures. Um, and you can see from the porch over yonder that Quigum Brolin beckons you over yonder, Master Bonebreaker. I will, I will go. Here's a guy. I uh, didn't want to disturb you. I have I have some things I'd like to talk about if you'd lend me your ear, Master Bonebreaker. Okay. Uh, first things first, I think it's time I come clean and tell you what I was doing in the tomb of Gilgamesh. Go on. I must admit, I am ashamed of it. Mm, plenty of things to be ashamed of, but what is it? That was not there of my own accord. I was sent there as part of an exile for crimes. Though, of course, I... I've slayed a fellow knight brother of the Holy Order of Julianos in a fit of rage. And as such, I was banished from my order and cast to defend the tomb of Gilgamesh until my dying days. Fit of rage, you say? I like that. <laughs> well... It had its moments, but I think it's something I would rather leave behind me. And through this short dialogue, um, Usko Bloomberg, over, over the course of the next like five or ten minutes or so, um, Quagon Brolin shares a bit of insight into what is perhaps like an like a dormant rage of his own. Um and you pick up a thing or two, listening to the way that he speaks about um, 
something that you can only find, you know, a, a bit, you know, so, it's some of it sounds a bit familiar to you. And the rest of it's like, oh, you know, I, I didn't quite think of it that way. Um, mm. Officially changing your rage conditions. Let's Ooh. see. As it stands, Master Bonebreaker, your rage is as follows. And the changes that will be being made... Um, your rage lasts for one minute. It ends early if you are knocked unconscious, or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked a hostile creature since your last turn, or taken damage since then. Um, that portion will be changing. Ooh. Your rage will last for one minute, and it ends early if you are knocked unconscious, or if... Let's see. The situation no longer has urgency. Mm. An incredible change to the rage. It's really how I would play it anyway. Um, but now it is official, Master Bonebreaker. No longer will you be limited. Um, if indeed one of your companions, you know, is in dire need of you, and you, you know, have no desire to inflict damage, but rather attempt to rescue, or, you know, something to that effect, you may use your rage in a bit more of a versatile way without having to, you know, without having fear of it ending prematurely. Sick. Nice. Very nice. And Quagong Quay Gwing, Quay you know, has, has this... has this heart-to-heart -heart with you, um... Kind of sharing a bit of his, a bit of his woes and, and a bit of his burdens. Um, yeah, but enough of that. That's neither here nor there. I think I've decided that when Loki returns, I will go back and make sure that the tomb is still in good standing, for it is what I've been charged with. But before I go, I desire to, if you allow me, Master Bonebreaker, to teach you some of my martial techniques. Yes. You are a fine warrior, and I think there's a little I can teach you, but the little I can teach you may be of some value. I think it'll take a few days or so, or... Perhaps not even that many if you're a fast learner. Well, let's get to it. Ah, very good. Very good. Um, so with this, I mean, for the, 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 the future... What is it? Time sinks of the uh, of the of the of the chant of the crimson bones is pretty well defined. Master Binbag, is there anything that you would want to do as far as like a like crafting project or any type of um multi-day spanning potentially project of any of any kind? Um any, yeah, any, anything that comes to mind? He's just gonna keep working on his uh, on his scrimshaw. Oh, okay, very good, very good. Do keep track. Do keep track. Do keep track, um, because we have a good. Let's see. Yeah, we have a good. We have a good eight hours, everyone. Mark it down. Eight eight hours are passing, and before you all know it. Um, the day is coming, the day is coming to an end quite radically. Um, and you've all gathered for an evening, an evening small brunch of some kind, free, thanks to the hospitality of the, of the great tree. Beautiful. And before long, you are all, you are all finding yourselves tucked into bed and slumbering for the evening.
Hey, another day passeth, passeth us by, gentlemen. And you all arise in the morning on the 26th of last seed, about 7 a.m. And it will be ration time once again, everyone. The great tree will be able to take care of dinner, but not breakfast. Very well. So you can all expect a ration a day to be subtracted for um for the duration of our of our current pace that we have here. Let's see, I don't have any more in my inventory. I'll have to just start taking from the bag. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's happening already. Let it be known, eight rations left in the bag. Oof. Okay. Good. Cyfax is going to spend quite a few hours today carefully cooking the remaining rations he has to um <laughs> to get to get him up to to get him three more from his from his from whatever raw meat he had lying around. Very good. Uh. Okay, so the ration for Cyfax. It was insect meat. Good, good. Seas open bag, you don't seem to mind the insect meat. Certainly not as much <laughs> as, as anyone else. Um, oh, I've been slurping that down the last two days. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, hey, for, for you guys, pretty palpable. Um, not too bad for... Eating them before. <laughs> For Cyfax and Mandian, all though. Yeah, yeah, for, Cy <laughs> for Cyfax and Mandian, it, it's, it's, a, it's a different story. <laughs> um, and we continue to progress on, gentlemen, with our, with our, our crafting montage. Another fine yes. day in the Fog Forest comes and goes. Um, Play my montage music, Cyfax, go. <laughs> You know, fucking yeah. some, you know, another disturb, more hey, disturbing. What is Cyfax doing during all this? Cyfax seems to be, um, he seems to be pretty much watching you and Quagon, um, Good. do, do, do this Good. training, uh, seminar. Though, though he is, he is, like <laughs> though, you know, though he <laughs> is careful to clear the way. Um, Mandy and Geldon, what did I what did I make you roll for your oh a survival? Give me another survival check, please. Sure. For the progress of today. Um Ooh. Nice dude. Nice dude. That's yeah. that's what you wanted. Um another twelve hours of work. Um going in seven AM <laughs> to you know, just about just about seven PM. Um more, Get it know, done. more or less. You're, for, you're on the way. For the scrimshaw as well, Master Binbag. That's another dozen hours if you choose to dedicate all that time to it. Mm -hmm. You know why not? It's it's gonna be a pretty fine piece you're, you're having you're gonna have there. I I tell you what, um, Mandy and Gelden, you suspect the armor will be finished by about noon time tomorrow if if this pace continues for you. Very good. Who's good bone breaker? Your training day with Klaygon, um, consists of a very particular flourish, uh, of, of two-handed weaponry. Um, Klaygon kind of unveils himself to be a little bit of a great weapon master, and he is able to show you a particular way of delivering a devastating strike to an opponent at the cost of accuracy. Um... He is he is trying to get you to learn the Wrath Hue, a absolutely devastating strike where you uh, take a two-handed weapon and hold it by like the very like you know like very very far pommel and then kind of swing it with the you know with the entirety of the mass and leverage behind it. A fucking terribly terribly devastating attack. Um. And that's and that's that's what you and Klaygon spent twelve hours today. If you, you know, if that's all right with you, trying trying to hash out and uh and and and, and see what's you know and trying trying to nail that down. Um, 
pull of 12 hours, I'd like to throw in a little flare. And, you know, let's go use a rage somewhere in there. Excellent. Excellent. Give me an athletics check, please, Master Bonebreaker. If you want to, with advantage. <laughs> thanks, thanks, to, thanks to your rage usage. Is your age available? Mm, mm. You make good progress. You make good progress. Another few hours of this and then some sparring with Quagon to really make sure that you have it down and you think that, you know, you, th you think that you'll have it locked in the vault and you'll have this new move that maybe you can unveil in combat. Could be pretty sick. Um, and with that, gentlemen, you are all treated to a, you know, some delicious chicken glaze sweet rolls. Uh... Ooh. Crafted by Waldwin and, and Woke here, Bitterroot Stead. Mm. That get you all right up to snuff. And a, another day passes by. I got a question off those. Uh, you said it was a chicken sweet roll, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Is that uh, perhaps a free hit die if we're not full? Um, sure. Yes. Yep. Sure. Sure. I'll allow right. it. I'll allow it. Why, you know, why not? Why not? Nice. That'll, that'll top me right off. Why not? You know, you guys have been, you guys have been pretty much, pretty much resting, you know, more, more or less. Ref, resting and crafting at your own pace. Um, we're just going to call it, you know, for how many hours you've been working on, you know, just, just, you know, just for the sake of doing it cleanly. Um, and with this gentleman, we're ready for breakfast again on another day, the 27th of last seed. We are getting there. Uh, today is a holiday. It's harvest end today. Though, though it doesn't really make too much for a, uh, you know, too much of a celebration. Those of you who know about such a thing, you know, maybe, maybe interested in it. Eh? You know, there you go. There you go. Okay, so with it being the 27th, everyone enjoying some delicious breakfast. Let's see, side mm -hmm, facts mm -hmm. will have one as well. This normal meat ration, it's really good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like normal meat. <clears throat> uh. Bummo yummo. Let me see, let me find Syphax and shit, took that rash. And we've got another, let's see, one, two, three, four, five hours. Uh, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mandy and Gelden, you have finished the repairs on your armor situation. Yeah. It's looking good. You're not as... Not as nice as it was, but you have you have it form and function. It is comfortable, um, and no longer compromised. Beautiful. I, I will be That's updating. I, I will be updating that back to uh, you know your adamantine armor repaired. Bumping you back up to a seventeen AC where you belong, my friend. Very good. Well, I don't know. I think that worked out all right. It wasn't so bad. Um, and who's good. good bone breaker? You have learned the wrath hue successfully. After yeah. a good day and a half of training and then sparring with Quagon, uh, he th he thinks you've got the form down and yeah, and you're a natural for it, especially with your reckless attack. He th he thinks you'll be a real shoe in. I will be adding the Wrath Hue um, to your sheet at a later date, I believe. Cool. But you may look forward to it for next time, most certainly. A, uh, mm. Very well done, gentlemen. Very well done, gentlemen. Master Binbag, you have another seven hours of um, scrimshaw crafting that you, yeah, you, of course, may add to the, you know, to the list. And... And, you know, some 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 nice crafting some nice crafting deeds have been done here, gentlemen. I I would say hot dog, hot dog. Um, Excellent. 
Mm. So Mandian was cooled rather conveniently, wrapping up your your respective montages at the at the same time. Is there anything else you guys wanted to do? For for perhaps another at least few hours or rest of the day or um um if I start now, can I finish Skiswell's tool by the end of the day? Ooh. If you if you do a really, really good job. Um, you can, you can I'll definitely try get started. to do a really, really good job. <laughs> Alright, give me a give me a survival check. Is that really, really good? <laughs> it's not it's not really, really good. <laughs> it'll probably take the rest of the day and half of the day tomorrow, but you know, you can you I can promise you skis can, while I do it, so I'm gonna do it. You could definitely get you know, it won't be compared to the suit repair you just made, it'll be a uh, you know, hardly hard hardly anything too fortuitous you you think. Um, I'm already saying. in practice working with this metal, might as well. Uh, anyone else up to anything in particular? Um, I am just going for a walk around the tree. Mm, okay. Okay. Very good. Very good, Master Bonebreaker. So be it. So be it. Heading out on your patrol, but give, give me, give me, a, give me a little, give me a little perception check as you're as you're strolling about. Mm, mm. All seems well to you. All seems well to you. Not, not, you know. Yet, yet another fine day at the base of the great tree. Chickens are doing, going about their thing, and all seems normal to you. see and with this gentleman the let's see it's a good six seven good seven hours or so and it's time for time for rest once again living a life of leisure within the tree of woke here bitter root mm, part of you does begin to worry at where woke here bitter root could could possibly be But one can only hope that it will return shortly. As you gentlemen rest once again in your moss-covered bunks and enjoying a fine dinner on the house, we have arrived at the 28th of Last Seed, a Sundas. And early in the morning, about 7 a.m., as you all gather for breakfast, um, let's see here. Cyfax. Time for another Cyfax ration. And a ration all around, it seems to me. We all know how it we'll goes. It up. Everyone's, everyone's straight up munching right now. Oh, let's see. Yeah, Cyfax is going to have to go on a great hunt of his own pretty soon. Run out of insect there, skis well. <laughs> <laughs> Straight munching that insect meat. I can't believe it. Oh. Mm. It's the twentieth day, gentlemen. As as you've gathered for breakfast, and, and there's you know bit bit of bit of a communal conversing going on. Um. All of a sudden, it was good bone breaker. As, as you're as you're kind of laughing and looking down, and, and and your eyes draw up toward the toward the beaded curtain that leads out to the porch of the great tree, you see a shrouded, hooded figure who places their hands in between the bead curtain and parts it, stepping into the space rather swiftly. A slender humanoid. As they cock back their hood, it is. I enter a rage. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking stand up a me. 
there is a you know the, the the squeaking of the stool as it as it knocks over and and, and everyone in the middle in the middle of breakfast as the table shakes so it's like oh yeah come on and, 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 and some of his food is knocked is knocked here and there um the figure draws back their hood and it's brandon Riger. Oh. oh easy easy I grab Brandon Rager by the shoulders. What are you doing here again? And where is my master? Easy. I said I'd be back in a few days. <laughs> what do you know about what's going on right now? What do you mean? I know where nothing more than you. Here? I, I can't say. I'm sorry. I I don't know. I I assume he'd be here, and in good spirits. I ask you unhand me. I do, and my rage subsides, not having struck him. <laughs> yeah, kind of, you know, kind of tidies himself up a little bit, and his and his, and his posture kind of kind of re recenters. I, I was hoping you'd all be in a bit higher spirits than, uh, than, than when the last I saw you. Uh, well, Master's been gone for a couple of days, so it's hard to be huh. too high spirited. I see. And you. <laughs> and if you have no idea where he is, I assume no one else here does. Ah. Uh. All we found were these feathers in his room. Ah. Well, he's... A man of mysterious ways. I... I can only hope he's alright and will hopefully return soon. I had a bit of a hard time getting back here myself. Boris seems rather agitated these days. Yeah, you can say that again. We ran into something a little crazy a couple of days back. Oh? Do tell. Well, have you ever seen anything like this? And brings him over towards Mandian and asks Mandian to show him the tail. I'll draw out the tail and show him the rough patchwork on my suit. Say, this beast managed to manage to punch right through my armor like it was nothing. Where'd you find this? Out hunting? Yeah, a couple hours from here. Klaygon! And, and, and Brant Frager calls, calls out for Klaygon. Klaygon make, makes his way over. What? What? Do you recognize this? And, and Brandon Riger most motions for you to pass him the, uh, the 10 pound budgel, basically, of a of a animal part. <laughs> I will underhand throw it to him. This look familiar to you? Claygon's like, oh shit! No way! Where'd you guys find that? Couple hours south of here. <clears throat> I see. They right, went out down there after all. Well, that's uh, it's definitely familiar to me. What the hell is it? It's one of those Daedra that came through that gate. Oh. The thing was terrible. I'm surprised any of us lived that encounter. If it wasn't for Loki or Bitteru, we probably would have all died. Now you said one of. Was there more than one of these? There was one of those, and... A few other different types of a demon creature. <laughs> well, that's not good. No. I I had a hard time. Brand's like, thanks, Claygon. You please carry on with your duties. 
And then some Qu 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 Quagon. Quagon wheezed as he as he answered shirtless. Well, I'm I'm pleased that that creature's gone. That's for sure. You've done well, Crimson Bones. As usual. Thanks. Mandy nods and picks his tail back up. No. Oh, sorry. I spent the last few days heading my way back toward House Riger, telling them of what has happened over these last few days and the bravery displayed by the Crimson Bones. My father is willing to reach some type of a business ship, perhaps, between you fine folks, but unfortunately, unless you're flying any type of official colors, he's hesitant to take you on under our employ just yet. But if it's a prospect you'd be interested in, I've come back with good news that I'm hoping perhaps we can get some type of a, a contract or business arrangement underway. And what kind of obligations do you expect from us in return? Well, I... It's hard to say what our service may entail yet. It could be anything from errands to war. But it's all a bit too uncertain right now. As long as there's bones, I'll be happy. There, there may be. There may be. It's bones and gold. You guys are yeah, pretty careful a lot. If war is an option, we gotta make sure we're compensated, at least. But you've treated us well so far. I won't lie, Crimson Bones, it doesn't come from a purely selfless place. I think that you guys could benefit my house incredibly, and as well as the people of Atla. Okay. I'll we'll have to keep that in mind. Let's we'll think about that. Figured the least I could do was proclaim my honest intentions. I know I have a, um, a habit for coming off as a little sneaky. <clears throat> Always good. Gives him a little scowl and agrees. And then there's a um, as as almost he you know he type of you know bows and bows and almost you know a uh, a gesture of submissiveness and you know or you know uh, you know respect. Um, there's a twinge all of a sudden, and he looks up uh, a bit dramatically. Um, and then he unfurls his cloak as he spins around, um, drawing out this longbow in a, in, a very, uh, in a very quick fashion and drawing it backward in such a way, who's good bonebreaker, <laughs> that you are... Uh, you are impressed. <laughs> this individual not only like turns and gets into a combat stance as he draws his weapon, but when he pulls back his bow to knock an arrow in a matter of three seconds, he pushes forward with his arm as much as he pulls back. And you can, you just feel like the potential energy that this, uh, this mysterious character could potentially bust out. As he's pointing his bow toward the entrance of the great tree. And that is where we will end our session tonight, gentlemen. Ooh. Unclear of what Brandon Riger sees outside. We'll have to find out on the next episode. Oh, yeah. Nice. Thank you, everyone, for attending another thank you, you know, thank you not too bad session you know tr tried something a little bit different here you know just passing by a few days at a time um i mean shit we've <laughs> 35 episodes ago we 
we started in the month of last seed and we're mm-hmm. still in the month of last seed. It's time, it's time, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's time, th- time to get it going a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, th- I think it's, I think it's overall time well spent, gentlemen, and we'll, we will see, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see how it all pans out on the next episode. Cheers for watching. Cheers for playing. The Crimson Bones. The Crimson Bones. Nice.